Hello Helldiver and welcome to another Helldivers 2 News and Leagues video. Today the latest major order will probably be another L. Will Super Earth be playable soon? An overpowered emote? Galactic War map improvements have been confirmed. Is it democratic to kick players off for being low leveled? How to correctly extract when farming samples? big illuminate leaks, new mission objective and a new stratagem leak. So if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in Helldivers 2, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel. Let's go! And hey, yo, listen, I'm never making fun of Joe again, I've learned my lesson, daddy, please just stop spanking me. So in my last video I reported how we destroyed the last major order that was to take out 2 billion terminates and I said we gotta pump those numbers up. And Joe Joe just came back looking for smoke. Now we gotta defend 10 different planets and as a community we are just way too fragmented and there isn't an in-game way for us to actually communicate with the entire community and get a common goal. Community managers do a very good job of communicating with us as it comes to you know which planets should we defend and whatnot but this is only over discord and reddit and occasionally over twitter. So this is my idea and you can tell me if it's good or bad in the comments below. Do you think we should have some sort of a tab in game somewhere in the menus that says democratic forum over there we would get all of the messages that we get over on discord in the channel code high command dispatches we don't even need a new tab in particular there is a dispatches tab currently in the game and that can just be expanded upon because let's face it these high command dispatches are very important for the community oriented goals of the game and them not being in game is kind of a pain point for me at this point next up will super earth be playable soon and look why i'm asking as i've told you before there's a bunch of websites which use the Helldivers API in order to make calls to the game and get some results back, like for example how many Helldivers are active on X planet. But they can tell you a whole bunch of other things, so if you click Super Earth on this website right here, HelldiversCompanion.com, you will get some very interesting information about Super Earth. There's 35,000 missions won, 4,000 lost, there's been some time on the surface spent, 27 automaton kills which is interesting and a whole bunch of other data and i've already leaked videos from super earth so when are we getting this and also how many super earth maps will there be because the ones i've seen are still in a lush jungle biome type situation and really people are clamoring for a cityscape next up we have this very funny post on the helldiver subreddit this pick has been blatantly overpowered since launch and it's time someone said something about it and it's just this person talks about how the best emote to use in the game is the hug emote and it's for pretty much obvious reasons. And look, I'm not gonna spoil the post for you, you can just read it right here on the screen or you can go to the original post, but what I think is that we need a whole lot of new emotes. And look, I think the hug emote is so overpowered because if you don't actually hug anyone, you stand there with your hands spread out and you're almost like waiting for something epic to happen. That's why a lot of people use it when they're launching an ICBM or something of the sort. And I have all of the other emotes and since all of them require the participation of a second person, it ends up as your Helldiver just raising their hand in the air and waiting for something to happen. So Arrowhead Studios, if you end up seeing this, which I doubt you will, but hey, one can hope, uh, make sure you put an emote wheel in the game and also give us some great solo emotes so we can show our feeling of pride and make sure we spread managed democracy in a funner way. Is funner even a word? Next up, we have a confirmation from Spitz. Supply line visualization is being worked on. It's being heavily suggested that supply lines, liberation and decay rates be implemented to the galactic map. And this is something that is being actively worked on as a direct result of feedback, yes. And this is why Arrowhead Studios are currently the goats of life service games. This is a feature which has been requested by a very big part of the community and it's just so good to see that Arrowhead are actively working on our feedback. And honestly, the less we rely on third party applications and websites, the better. And now we have a heartbreaking moment. For context, I'm level 59, playing a level 7 mission. I created a game waiting for players to join and thankfully it didn't take too long. A level 19 joined and we entered our pods. He says, thanks for not kicking me. Being a bit puzzled, I respond, why would I kick you? 
many high level players kick me immediately for being too low level. And then Burned Banana goes on to say that this player did absolutely fine in the mission and they were a good asset to have. The question is, what do you guys think about this mentality of kicking out low level players from the higher difficulty missions? Let's consider this, if you manage to reach those higher level difficulties at a very low level, that means you are just a very good player at the end of the day. The only thing you could realistically say as an argument is, yeah, but a person under level 20 doesn't have access to every stratagem in the game other than the exosuit since the exosuit is not really a must. But then I would say this, the best stratagem in game hands down is the ego airstrike and that's one of the earlier ones you can unlock in the game so does it really matter? But I'm also gonna be honest with you though for one context where this actually kind of matters and is the 15 minute evac missions. If I enter such a mission and I see most of the players are level 30 ish or under I would be a little bit dubious and most likely I would consider leaving just because they they most likely don't even know that these missions are used mostly for sample farming. And I've been in the situation a couple of times, I did stay with the teams, but I would go off and do my own thing and people would ask, wait, are we doing something now? Why are you not here? Etc, etc. They just don't know that firstly, to evacuate the civilians, you only realistically need two people to defend and you can have two people sample running. But even if you're not doing that, a well-coordinated team can evac the 50 civilians on Helldive difficulty in about five minutes tops if you're, you know, being a little bit leisurely about it. And then you can go on to farm 30 plus common samples, 30 plus rare samples and all six super samples very easily. And I've had that happen to me a bunch of times where I get into games with people who are like level 60, level 100 or something like this. And we are just an insane team, we don't even drop at the target. First we drop to start sample farming, we run those samples up, kill all the bio titans on our way because someone picked up rocket pods and a quasar cannon and an eat and whatever whatever and we just end up mauling through everything. Run those numbers up, rendezvous at the target and still complete the mission with time left which is just, you know, it feels really cool like a symphony in the making. But yeah, I'm interested, what do you guys think? Tell me about it in the comments. And before we move on to the leaks, you should always call for extraction as soon as it's available. Pelican 1 will wait for you till the end of the mission, securing the landing zone with its 30 millimeter cannons and killing everything within a hundred meter range. I've seen many complaints about Ugh, extraction is called early or don't call for extraction yet we want to farm samples and it's clear that some folks do not realize how extraction works or that you can have a dedicated gunship guarding your extraction site. If called early Pelican 1 comes down to enter guard mode prowling around the extraction site slaughtering everything in range of its guns and it will stay there for however much time is left in the match. That means that you can go clear the whole map collect samples, complete side objectives or whatever you want to do. And when you're all done, just walk safely to the extraction knowing that A, it's already been there waiting for you and B, the landing zone is 110% secure. So what you need to do when extraction is available, send one player to call it in and two, when the countdown hits zero and Pelican 1 is arriving, that player leaves the landing zone and rejoins their team. Note, the dropship will never leave without you unless the mission timer runs out or a player boards first. And I almost agree with this post, there's just a couple of things I think are a little bit of a stretch. First, you gotta make sure the player who is calling the extraction knows that when they see the pelican one in the air, they need to bolt. And two, if you don't call the extraction early, you actually have extra time after the mission timer is over for the pelican one to come and arrive to you. Yet I do need to admit that if you are in a very well coordinated team, the strategy outlined in this post will work best. What do you guys think, tell me about it in the comments. And it's time to move on to the leaks portion of the video, so if you do not want any spoilers, this is your official spoiler warning. Before you leave, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel. We good? We good, let's go. And to start off, we again have the GOAT of leaking 3D models and animations, Iron Sights, coming up with the Colony Rover vehicle. This is the Colony Rover. It is a super earth vehicle and may be able to be driven by players as it has the driving properties and placeholder animations. You can see the rover on certain missions, but it's destroyed. And considering I already talked about super earth, will we get a new mission type where you evacuate civilians by driving them around? It kinda sounds like something that's possible, it definitely sounds like an idea for a mission, so why the heck not? Hey, Arrowhead, 
what are we gonna do about this and next up we have the tier 2 tripod so as you likely have seen from my previous videos the illuminate will have a unit which we are currently dubbing the tripod that basically looks like one of those aliens from war of the worlds and here is what is known about it the tier 2 tripod has more armor and possibly more abilities than tier 1 while both tripods look similar the tier 2 is darker slightly larger and much more armor than tier 1 we suspect tier 2 tripods will be capable of the death bow ability, while tier 1 tripods will be limited to beam and stomp attacks. The tier 2 tripod will explode upon death. A lot of illuminates seem to be following this tier system which seems cool to spice up gameplay a little bit. And this is coming directly from the horse's mouth from the goat iron sights, so make sure you go and hit him up and tell him thank you. Next up we have another illuminate unit which again has four arms, very heavily armored and actually kind of looks imposing and a little bit like those guys from the Covenant from Halo if I'm not mistaken. I am absolutely loving the look of this one and it seems that the long staff we've previously seen appears to be a hybrid weapon used by this guy. Moving on we also have the Illuminate Adept which is a mage like sort of character. It again has this one eye prominently featured across the center of the face and a little bit of those squid like things on the mouth. It seems like it will be a long range unit as you can see because it's pretty much all robes and it just reminds you of a mage from any RPG. I'm super excited to finally fight these guys and it seems like this will happen very soon considering that we are at the point of the story where we are fighting both the bots and the bugs which is something I predicted in one of my previous videos. Well, I didn't particularly predict it per se, I kind of reported on it, but same thing. So get ready, I think in up to like two weeks, Illuminate are gonna be here, max next Warbond, but it seems like Arrowhead don't really care if it's Warbond or not, and they just drop things randomly, so... I think two weeks, maybe three tops. And next up we have another stratagem, this time is the medical backpack, which is pretty much the same as a supply backpack, but it has red rations on them with a big white H, making sure you know that this is something that the medics use. It will pretty much give you stims when you are actually out of stims. So acts the same way as ammo, but for your stims, which makes sense, medical backpack, pretty simple, it does look kinda cool but will it be useful? I really doubt it. And that's about it for the video guys, I hope you really liked it, if you did make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh -huh.